So welcome everyone. Uh, um, my name is Marcio Gagliato. I am uh, from imagepss.net, um, one of the members of the team. Um, and we are very excited to have each of you here. Uh, today, uh, though the setting is like a webinar, we are intentionally calling um, it not a webinar, but it's actually a working session uh, where we are we are we have we have a number of uh, colleagues uh, um, that uh, have shared frontline uh, questions related to to very different humanitarian situations, um, and those questions we are hoping today that during the session today we can discuss and help the colleagues with the challenge that they are facing uh, for children and family uh, with regards to mental health and psychosocial support. Um, so we have uh, this session, uh, this working session today. It's, uh, it's a project in partnership uh, of HIAS, uh, MHPSS, the collaborative, and MHPSS.net. So many greetings to all of you. It's really nice to have uh, you here today, and, and we are really very much looking forward to have your, uh, your thoughts and your reflections, your experience, and your expertise. Um, I can see that a number of people are introducing themselves here at the, at the chat. So very, a big welcome for Diana, who I, I know quite well from Uzbekistan, Sudaba, Yone, uh, from the Japanese Red Cross. I, I don't know if you are in Japan. If you are, it's quite late for you. Um, and um, Mr. Uh, Asaduzaman, I'm sorry, I'm sure I'm saying your, your name wrong but I just want to make the effort here. Um, and uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, ICRC, UNICEF, Red Cross, uh, HI. This is super nice. Thank you. All right, so let's get the work uh, moving. Um, um, the working session today is that uh, we have received a number of uh, uh, questions uh, from colleagues um, uh, in four settings. A colleague from Ukraine in the context of the war, a colleague from Uganda in a refugee context, a colleague from Uzbekistan in a context of uh, working with children uh, repatriated from, from Iraq and Syria, affected by the ISIS conflict, and another colleague from Syria, Turkey, a uh, technical working group uh, uh, for the earthquake response. Uh, we are going to play the videos, the four videos. They are very short videos or, or just recording. Two of them have just played and recorded because it would be easier for to send to us. And uh, basically, we are going to now uh, hear their, 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 their question, their, the context and the question. And then we'll, straight after that, we are going to share uh, in groups. We go to breakout rooms where we are going to brainstorm and discuss those challenges uh, that our colleagues have presented. And we are going to then, by the end of the session, um, uh, record a, a message back uh, with the results of our discussion to our colleagues. So uh, let's then uh, start playing the video. Hello, everyone. This is Bishar, a psychologist. Uh, I'm based in Turkey, responsible for MHPSS program in my organization, also, and co-chairing the technical working group for Northwest of Syria cross border response. I guess you are already familiar with the Syrian crisis, which is already complicated and always has been with all the armed conflicts and wars since 2011. This includes actually this shortage of resources among the lack of other basic things and services in different sectors. And now, above all of that, now we are trying to deal with the destructive earthquake which hit all of Northwest of Syria and just in two minutes of time affected on 5 million of population, almost half of them are IDPs or, or internally displaced persons. And as always, children had their share from this horrible incident. Most of them are war affected vulnerable groups. They, they were already trying to recover from traumatic situations they were been through over years. So we believe this recent incident in a way triggered their traumatic memories and impacted their coping mechanisms and functions in different levels or psychoeducating uh, normal reactions to stress and distress uh, for adults, especially for caregivers uh, and for children and especially for grief because 
uh, we have a lot of a big number of children who already lost their family, the whole family, or some of their family, relatives, friends. Uh, I mean, children now, uh, they need some grief support or grief-related support. Uh, we need also, uh, let's say, to, I would say, train the caregivers, also family members, like when to seek help, how to early detect some signs and symptoms on their children. Uh, other points, we, we are trying to address also uh, some uh, explanation about the importance on self-care, especially for uh, school teachers. Uh, I mean, preventing burnout among teachers, also caregivers, uh, some changing on attitudes on self-care uh, also for them. Uh, finally, we were also trying to uh, discuss the, some educational challenges in times of crisis. I mean, uh, what to do for teachers and wh what do they have to expect and accept uh, in such situations? So I don't know if this is too much of points to share, but still I believe any ideas or any inputs from you guys uh, would be really helpful for us. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Bashir. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, some um, some people they asked in the here in the in the chat that they cannot see the video, but there are two. That we had four uh, recording. Two are with videos, and two are not. This was one of no videos. But if you can now post the Ukraine or Uganda one. Hello, my name is Grace Obalim. I'm a clinical psychologist by training, and I work with TPO Uganda as the MHPSS advisor. TPO is a non-governmental organization with operation in over 45 districts here in Uganda. We provide community-based mental health to refugees and the non-refugees community of Uganda. I also support at the Uganda National Working Group as the national coordinator. I am also part of the steering committee for the East and Southern African MHPSS group of practice. I am here to share my experience in regards to MHPSS services for children and their family in Uganda. The second challenge that we face mostly here that I, I have been able to see and experience is in regards to lack of criteria that partners can follow in regards to providing MHPSS to children and their family. When it comes to service provision for adults and youth, Globally, there's quite a number of interventions that you can easily pick from and follow the criteria from guidance number one to the last in regards to providing services. But for children and families, it's very limited, mostly MHPSS services within the emergency setting. You find that the professionals that we needed, the skills, the criteria or the guidelines that is needed for the service provider, I earlier on said we provide community-based mental health. Because of funding, we do not have a lot of money to, prof to employ many professionals. So we, play, we employ many food soldiers. Those food soldiers are social workers, whom we train them in providing MHPSS. Now, you find that because of that, they would need some guidance, but it's not really something that we have openly here in Uganda that there's no clear guidelines in regards to providing MHPSS services for children and families. So you find partners speaking from one or two interventions and using it to provide services for the children. And then there's also, finally, we have issues with um, intervention itself. The intervention approaches that we have, none of them is child specific. Most of them focuses on adults. They are friendly, they're very easy with adults, but we end up using them to support children because we don't have a child specific intervention. Yes, there is journey of life that REPSI has been able to release some years back. It helps in addressing children to uncover themselves through stories, storytelling and going through their life story and also brings in caregivers, but it does not treat, if you find a child with suicidal tendency, journey of life cannot treat that. With you, if you find a child with moderate or severe active signs and symptoms of an MHPSS disorder, journey of life cannot treat it. So 
lack of an intervention approach that we can use specifically for children and their family is another issue that we face. Added on to with funding, definitely. Funding to, um, towards MHPSS is generally limited. And then now when it comes to children, you, you, you really just have to always attach children to their caregivers, attach children to the community. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for, for your sharing today. So now we can go uh, to perhaps to Zubekstan, which is not a video as well, it's just a recorded message. Uh, my name is Nazima. I am in, an employee of the local NGO here in Turbana city of Uzbekistan, uh, which is called Republican Center for Social Adaptation of Children. Uh, being a primary UNICEF partner uh, since autumn 2019, our NGO has been uh, providing psychosocial support to the children and women uh, repatriated from the war conflict zones uh, such as Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. So far, over uh, 100 uh, women and over 300 children returned to our country. They are supported by the teams of social workers and psychologists. I'm a social worker and who works with these children and families under the project financed by the European Union. And since 2019, uh, Uzbekistan has implemented five campaigns to return its citizens, children and women uh, for the, from the war and conflict zones. Our team of uh, social workers and psychologists started providing support at the stage when women and children returned to their communities after a monthly adaptation period in the sanatorium. And uh, our work uh, starts with establishing contacts and trusting relations with the families, which is of high importance. In our work, we use global standards uh, of uh, mental health and psychosocial support and the case management standards. So we do needs assessment of each family and develop an individual plan of action together with the family members, including children. Uh, they are uh, psychologists in our team uh, who are providing services to children when uh, women and caregivers of unaccompanied children. Upon their arrival to their communities, uh, children and women returned from the armed conflict zones sometimes uh, face with uh, condemnation, negative attitude and stigma. Despite the state policy of accepting these children and women and providing them uh, with overall support Anyway, in some cases, women and children still are not accepted by their relatives, either get in conflict with them or don't communicate at all. In some cases, uh, they face the stigma and condemnation in collaboration with state agencies as well. We would like to see the successful intervention programs for prevention of stigmatization, and working with families in the communities. We would like to learn the experience of other uh, countries on successful adaptation and integration of the repatriated women and children in their communities. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, Nazima. All right, so we have the last one, uh, which is uh, Ukraine. Greetings from Kyiv. My name is Karina, and I am a master trainer at the Lego Foundation in Ukraine. Our team targets all layers of educational infrastructure, embedding learning through play as the core approach in all educational institutions there. We implement an ecosystemic approach in the formal sector of education by involving all in-service and pre-service teacher training institutions in sustaining learning through play, as well as building and supporting online professional communities on Facebook. With methodological materials, free webinars, and online sessions. In 2022, we started to cooperate with the MHPSS Collaborative to implement mental health and psychosocial support teacher training on the national level. 
to support children's well-being during the Ukrainian crisis and help teachers to develop kids' social emotional skills. Today, our focus is on the rehabilitation and recovery of the education system, continue supporting teachers, children, and parents with quality learning experiences and provide psychosocial support. Because of the Russians' armed attack, it was recorded that more than 1,600,000 children were forced to relocate to other conditionally safe areas. Therefore, many children suffer from the problem of integration into a new educational environment. They struggle with building strong relationships with others. Kids miss their friends, classmates, and teachers from their previous education institutions, and they can actually turn inward, withdraw into themselves. Kids higher irritability, being worried, anxious, inactive, feeling hopeless are the main mental health and psychosocial concerns that have arisen in children due to being relocated. The particular challenge is how to help children get accustomed to the new environment and start getting along with each other. Could you advise us how do you support teachers with the children's integration into the new surrounding? How do you help teachers create a safe environment for children to integrate into a new school setting while providing conflict-sensitive psychosocial support? Thank you so much, Karina, for posing those challenge questions as well. Wonderful. So how, this is how it's going to work now. We, we are going to open the breakout rooms, and uh, each of you can choose uh, uh, one of the four challenges um, to go. Uh, and uh, then we have a moderator already assigned for each of those groups, where this moderator is going to facilitate the discussion. Um, and then we also have already a person that is assigned uh, in each group uh, to be the note taker. They will be sharing the questions, the videos again. They will share in a middle board. Uh, and this person will be taking the, the notes from your debate, your conversation, your reflection. Uh, and you have about 30 minutes for this work. And the final 10 minutes is we are going to send a message to everyone. Is, the, is when in these final 10 minutes, we are gonna ask each group to dedicate the final 10 minutes for recording a video back to, to, to our colleagues that presented the challenge. So this is, a, this is the idea of our discussion today, hoping that this collective reflection, uh, we can share our brains uh, and, 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 and perhaps come uh, with, uh, uh, insightful uh, idea to ourselves that are here also for a reason, probably same reason of work um, that uh, our colleagues shared. And together we can reflect a little bit more uh, around that. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back uh, to our main room. Um, I It sounds like I just got a few messages here asking for a few more minutes, but sorry, I, I didn't see that before. So I hope uh, you were still able to, to record your, your final message. Uh, otherwise, all the facilitators will be fired after this meeting. So, um, uh, wonderful. So let's go. Just go uh, 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 a quick, uh, a quick um, uh, two three minutes, if possible, from each group, uh, summarizing the key recommendations uh, of uh, uh, of your your sessions. Perhaps we can start here with uh, the first one in front of me, Ukraine, which is Dipali and Anna. Uh, but uh, not Ukraine necessarily... was me. Yeah. yeah, I think that was me, uh, Marcio. That was me and oh, Carlo. OK. Uh, yeah, uh, we had a, a very valuable discussion, I think, in our group. So the question and the challenge from Ukraine was um, just given a couple of ideas about the contents. There are lots of ADP moving from one part of the country to another, and there are ruined in infrastructure in a lot of areas that have conflict, active conflict uh, at the moment. So the challenge that was shared with us was how to support teachers in school settlements 
settings uh, so that they, the teachers, could support children, those children that are struggling with changing the environment and the um, changing the uh, teaching environment, but also losing friends and uh, having to be in this uh, new um settlements so uh our ideas was be like we started with supporting the, the teachers themselves so uh, making sure that they are okay and uh, they have support and their uh, basic needs are met there were a couple of ideas to involve children to developing the approaches uh, so that they feel also involved and responsible in implementing those approaches there were ideas how that teachers can have a regular kind of intervention of support groups where they can sit together and share their challenges and approaches and uh, ideas and help each other, but also feel that they're not alone in their challenges. And there were quite a while ideas, I would say, at least all of them, we managed to do the recording and we have some notes and resources shared. So I would say that, like, I think we were very, 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 very much involved. And thank you for this space. And for all participants with for your ideas, that was very interesting. Thank you so much, Kira. Um, perhaps let's go now for Uganda. Sure, Marcia, I can go ahead. Uh, so we had an interesting discussion in our group and we had participants from different backgrounds and experiences. So it was really nice to hear from all of them about um, what they think are the main needs of children in displaced contexts and how can those children be supported. Uh, so just to reiterate, the challenge before us was that uh, there is a lack of child and family specific MHPSS interventions. Um, and uh, Grace just asked for uh, our support in uh, finding out resources or uh, interventions that can be used for children and families in a displaced context. So we started with talking about uh, what are the needs of uh, children in a context of displacement? What are the MHPSS needs that they have? Um, and uh, we have uh, a lot of interesting contributions on that. So we discussed how mental health and physical health are uh, very much linked, but often talked about in isolated ways. So it is important to, while addressing the mental health needs of children, also assess what physical health needs that they might have. Do they have any chronic conditions? And then within that, focus on specific subgroups of children who might have uh, greater need of continuous health support, for instance, children with disabilities. Uh, we also talked about the importance of first and foremost, uh, getting children in contact with their caregivers. Um, and then also restoring a state of normalcy, ensuring access to basic services. And that also includes ensuring access to school and having teachers who are trained in providing support to uh, children and uh, meeting their MHPSS needs. Um, and then we moved on to talking about the approaches that might be helpful. So we were thinking of different layers of the pyramid here. And we thought of some interventions and approaches that are relevant for all children in that context. For example, art therapy and play therapy. And we also thought of school-based MHPSS interventions and interventions with people who are in contact with children, for instance, and play a big role in the lives of children, for example, teachers and caregivers. Um, and then we talked of interventions that are more specialized and need referrals. So uh, uh, more specialist uh, psychological interventions. Uh, we did not quite get to discussing the resources a lot because we kind of ran out of time, but uh, one of the resources that came up was I Support My Friends, and uh, one of the colleagues in the group mentioned some resources that they are using in the Zimbabwe context uh, for play therapy and art therapy, so we might hear more from them and we might be able to forward those to Grace. Uh, that's all from us. Thanks so much. Wonderful, thank you, Dipali, and very well done for the group. Uh, so now we can go to Syrian Turkey group. Yeah, I will reflect, and then the colleagues will reflect on that. Um, I think with Syria, 
um, we discuss the context and the context has also exacerbated recently with the disaster and that creates a kind of um, uh, impact on the human resource, limited human resource, and it affects also children's um, mental health service, accessing services, especially in, in the Syria side, Turkey has somehow established system to support children, at least in hospital setting. Um, the, the good thing in, in as, as an potential uh, opportunity is there's a functional um, working group where the working group is effectively engaging with different sectors, including education, uh, protection cluster, where trying to mainstream uh, mental health services for children and other vulnerable groups within that. So one of the, the recommendation for the group is just to ensure effective uh, coordination mechanisms are there. And then the other is targeted training opportunities to targeting children, targeting uh, caregivers, um, and then make sure that also children have also access to specialized services within the, the context of health service provision and other other opportunities. And then also uh, the, the good part, we have some colleagues who have been working in the coordination plus also fraction um, there and they have, they know the areas, the gaps where, where the things are. I think one of the main issue uh, raising is that there's lack of trained professionals who can provide specific child uh, prevention, uh, child based mental health and psychosocial interventions for that as, as a recommendation is to have a tailored training opportunities for, for targeting teachers, caregivers and service providers. Um, then the other, I think, uh, issue was raised also like the way we have women stream services, what kind of services are really important for children, structured and unstructured uh, art therapeutic interventions, which incorporates play uh, as a main core intervention. Uh, could be also mainstream in the responses. That are some of the areas we reflect. As part of um, important resource, PM Plus was come up as a kind of intervention, especially addressing caregiver issues, maybe. Uh, and then there's a lot, a lot of resources one colleague share us, but uh, it requires some kind of uh, permission from the organization to share. Perhaps uh, if any of my colleagues would like to add on this, you're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. In a home. Now we have the last group uh, um, uh, from Uzbekistan, which I was there uh, facilitating. So I don't know. Uh, Gunai was speaking so well. I don't know if she would like to wrap up or give any comment from this group. And by the way, I left a message for you, Gunai, in the chat, if you can uh, look at that. Well, anyway, let me start. If you feel free to connect uh, to complement that later. But basically, the question from Uzbekistan uh, is, uh, if you remember, it's related to stigma on the repatriation and reintegration process related to, uh, to children and mothers coming from Iraq and Syria, Al Hall camps, uh, etc. So it's, uh, and we discussed it. It was a small group, but very, let's say, profound discussions. I think it was extremely rich, the conversations there. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, the conclusion of the discussion we had, uh, we had experience from Azerbaijan there, Uzbekistan people, and, uh, and from other contexts as well, is basically how um, uh, the importance of working with the families that are, are actually receiving back uh, the children and mothers, so the importance of working with the, ch the children, uh, with the families, in helping them perhaps with some psychoeducation, but also how to generate empathy uh, from the community, the schools, especially as a major uh, uh, gateway for for a reintegration process, and uh, and uh, and how generating empathy uh, uh, can actually uh, uh, reduce the issue or address the issue of stigma related to those children. Did I say this well, Guna? I don't know if you'd like to complement anything. Um, no, thank you, Marcel. Yes, I think you wrapped up very well. But yes, the, the again, the one of the main points was the psychoeducation, be it with the family members or the governmental bodies or social workers, because really sometimes we, people don't know what is trauma and how it affects those children or adults. And some of those 
uh, behaviors that considered naughty behaviors a bad child behavior, it's not done on purpose. It's just a survival mode, pretty much. These children are trying to survive in this society. They're not on purpose trying to make you mad or not to listen to you. So as you said, empathy, understand these children and support them. And uh, yes, when you work with the child, it's the essential to work with their caregivers. Otherwise, the effect is not that good. So you have to also support the family members in order to help the child. Thank you, Gunai. Diana, would you like to compliment as well? Uh, yes, uh, this is just an idea that came to my mind uh, when I heard um, the different uh, countries and uh, colleagues from different countries. Uh, as uh, many of us were suffering from the lack of uh, professional clinical uh, psychologists and social workers. I can share the experience of Uzbekistan that uh, jointly with our health colleagues in UNICEF, uh, we support school psychologists with guidelines on um, uh, child sensitive, um, you know, uh, simple assessments, screenings and uh, interventions. So uh, it's uh, designed uh, for paraprofessional, uh, not only psychologists, but psychosocial uh, services, uh, school based psychosocial services. And the original version is in English. And uh, maybe it would be helpful if we share with other countries uh, as well for the training. Wonderful, Diana. Do you hear me now? Everyone hear me? Yeah, good. Sorry, because I removed the thing here. So thank you, Diana, for that. And the answer is yes, we would like to have that. Uh, I think it would be useful. And then I can see here, Diana, another Diana. Uh, Diana, have your hands raised from the beginning. Yeah. Sorry for catching that at the beginning. Yeah. Yes, I think there is uh, to Diana, and it's a good news. Uh, this Diana is from Afghanistan. I'm talking. Uh, so I think nowadays you know that more than one year that this new changes comes in Afghanistan, the children cannot uh, go to school from more than six grades, upper than six grades, they cannot go to school, especially the ladies. Yes. I, I, I don't know if you were part of the... I'm sorry, Diana, for that, first of all. It's... Um... Uh, Yes, uh, they cannot go to, but in, uh, we are trying to uh, just uh, make some child-friendly space, uh, which is important for uh, psychoeducating the uh, children in child-friendly space, and also uh, to work a little bit about the uh, stigmas that nowadays they are finding. They are just uh, creating with stake mods about these challenges that uh, they are facing uh, uh, regarding to somehow the other uh, problems like securities or like uh, the uh, new regimes that it comes. So about the stake mods that it's uh, creating yeah. uh, for the children or for the mothers, uh, mm -hmm. we are going to educate them. So for psychoeducating the children, so there is a um, need like a uh, 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 place it's important that that place should be uh, warm and also should be a, a little bit uh, uh, like free of the fear free of those things that they were uh, just uh, feeling before that one so our groups uh, they were just uh, uh, agree to make a child friendly space for them uh, place that they have to. I'm, I'm very sorry for for interrupting you. It's just because we are uh, running out of the time, and and it, okay. I, I really feel extremely sorry for that. But I I I see that this discussion has been closed to the discussions of some of the, these groups as well. I don't know if you have oh. seen, uh, but my colleague uh, Valera, she actually uh, I don't know if you have seen this this resource uh, that uh, MHPSS Collaborative High has in. Uh, mhpesa.net have put together and perhaps there yes. might be giving some uh, other other instruments and elements and resource uh, for uh, for that can be useful for your context too. Uh, yes. I don't know if, if um, yeah if you, if you could perhaps conclude uh, or 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 otherwise let me give this to Valeria to share this uh, uh, wrapping up the the webinar today as well. Uh, in sharing this this uh, final resource. 
yes, okay, why not? It might be helpful, 100%, it would be helpful. And also we are uh, translating the PM plus also. In Dari Pashto, we translated that one. And uh, about uh, basic needs, all the things that we uh, talked with it, it was uh, so helpful. Thank you, thank you. Glad to hear that, Diana. And I'm sorry for the pressure under this time. Valera, over to you. Yes, um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you and for you also. Thank you, Diana. Um, and for helping also the four colleagues that share their challenge with us. We will also like to invite you to continue um, these discussions and conversation on our MHPSS for Children and Families COP. So we just launched it, um, I think at the beginning of this year. So you can join there to find the recordings of also our this webinar and the previous ones, and also different resources that might be helpful and our um, resource collection for children and family in emergency settings. We will leave the links to the resource collection, the COP and an exit survey that we will appreciate if you could please um, completed before you leave. Uh, thank you again for joining us today. And we're gonna have our fourth webinar um, that we will share the date soon, that we'll have the similar um, format as this one. We'll also have challenges and we'll also keep helping colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Valera. Thank you, everyone. So just please really take this SurveyMonkey uh, final exit survey, the link. It takes only five minutes, but for us, your feedback is so important because really guide us to improve next time. And concluding, thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here today. Special thanks to the persons that shared their stories from the field. And uh, we look forward to see you again uh, in, a, in a month's time.